Hey guys, how's it going? All right, so in this video, I actually wanna to touch on some new things you guys probably have never heard of. I have a deep understanding of human interactions and of game. I've noticed that a lot of pickup artists are constantly rehash and regurgitate the same concepts over and over. And so with this video, I actually wanna teach you guys some new concepts, concepts that are strictly my own. They're, they're very nuanced and a lot of them are very like hard to comprehend. So if you guys have a hard time with it, obviously just leave me a comment and I'll explain it. With that being said, let's get started. Fuck this song. Drop the bass. Now, if you guys haven't heard of the concept called reticular activation system, it's basically how your mind focuses, what your mind chooses you to focus on. Now, what a lot of you guys don't know is, it's a lot of controlled by subconscious brain. You can control to a certain extent, but it's pretty hard to focus your reticular activation system. A lot of times it takes a lot of tricking. So your brain is constantly barraged by a lot of different concepts, a lot of different uh, stuff, a lot of different stimuli from the outside world. Like there's a lot of stuff constantly getting thrown at you. So your brain has to choose and decide what's of value and what's not. So what your brain focuses on is things that are of value and of threat. What is the most of value and what's the most of threat? What does your brain decide is going to either get you the furthest or is going to possibly harm you? Now, when I used to uh, sell cars when I was younger, when I was like 20, 21, there was a concept called spinning. Now spinning was something that veterans would do to newbies to uh, trick them and make them relax, make their brain relax. So what they do, they would tell the new guys, oh, it's so slow today. Oh, there's not going to be any car sales. It's going to be terrible. So it basically turn off your brain and be like, okay, there's no value. There's no threat. Relax. Chill out. The value right now is saving your energy. So save your energy. So that's what your RAS does to you. So when a car would finally come, the veteran would be like, green, and see the car and call the car before it came in. Because the newbies would be like, oh, it is kind of slow. Oh, man, I'm not going to make any sales today. It's going to suck. Oh, well. And then your brain starts relaxing. Your brain's like, well, you don't need to put any effort today. Let's, let's, let's slow it down. Let's save your energy for later. And then when a car does come, the veteran, now that he's put you at ease, will go and attack. Sometimes I would do this with maybe pickup bars out in the field that I saw as threats. Maybe they were going to be taking my girls or something like that. If they weren't on my team, I would say this. See, this is why a lot of you guys maybe like, so let's say if I was out with a student and I'd be like, go approach her and I'd be like, go talk to her. And this was an attractive girl. The guy, a lot of times, wouldn't see who I was talking about. I'd be like, go talk to her, go talk to her, go talk to her. And the guy'd be like, who are you talking about? And the reason that is, is because that guy doesn't think that he can get that girl. He sees an attractive girl and all he sees is, is uh, threats. All he sees is something that could hurt his ego. They could drop him down like on, in a hierarchy which is bad. So basically what your brain does is it blocks that girl out and that's not an actual value. Per that's not, that girl's not a value. She's only a threat. So block her out so he doesn't approach her. That's what your brain does to you. And this is why visualization is so key because this is not just with women. It's also with success, with money, with maybe like starting businesses. Like you have to like, your brain is like a net. It's like, all right, is, is he on the level to get that? Or is that just going to hurt his ego and drop him in the hierarchy? So what you got to do is start visualizing success. You got to visualize getting certain girls. You got to visualize a set going well. That's why visualization is something that I constantly hammer home with you guys. It's a very big thing you guys got to do because your subconscious is going to fuck you up unless you visualize. As a side note too, if you guys ever had like maybe a subject in school you're really good at or maybe like a bunch of subjects you didn't have any strength in, the reason is that people get really good at something is because your brain sees value in learning it. So if you guys were like see Einstein or maybe like maybe you yourself, you were really good at math. Your brain saw the reason for you to be good at math, your subconscious brain. It was like, okay, if he learns math, he can do this, he can do this, he can do this. He'll get more accepted in society. So your brain's like, okay, awesome. Now for maybe, maybe another subject, maybe like English, your brain's like, when am I ever going to use English? When is this ever going to help? Uh, so your brain will block it out. It's not useful for you to learn. You're just burning energy using this. Let's learn something else different that will actually help you out in the end. Your brain will point you in the direction by saying, hey, this is fun, learn this. Hey, this is fun, learn this. I, I really strictly, I focus on this. 
So if a job is not going to be fun for me, I know that my brain's going to throttle me and make me bad at it. So I don't go for it. Like in game, like I knew that my brain was pushing me to game to learn this because I saw the value in learning this. Uh, after years of my dad and my brother showing my subconscious brain that it was really important to be good with girls, be good with people, and be charismatic, my brain's like, okay, I see value in that, let's learn that. So if you have somewhere where you have a lot of fun doing it, a lot of times your brain sees value in it where it doesn't see uh, value in something else. Like if you're learning a book or something like that, you're trying to find what kind of books to read, I actually will focus on this. I'll be like, where do I find the fun? Is it, do I find this book interesting? Do I find this book interesting? And if I find a book interesting, I buy it. That's how I focus and that's how I educate myself. Now, a really cool technique to do with this, so let's say you're out in the field, all right? There's something I call scrambling RAS. So let's say a girl is trying to, let's say you're really into a girl and one of her friends is really against you and she's trying to fight this. All right, so this is something that actually happened to me maybe a couple years ago that I wrote a field report about. And one girl's like ready to go home with me and whatnot. We're ready to, you know, bounce. But her friend goes, are you really gonna fuck him, Sarah? Are you really gonna fuck him? And I, and instantly, the second she says that, I instantly go into, oh no, we're just hanging out. Hey, by the way, I actually like the way you did your makeup. Yeah, no, you did a good job on it, you look pretty. Yeah, well, I like the whole, the way your entire ensemble is. No, I really respect that. Uh, do, you, do you have a boyfriend right now? No shit. So yeah, you're single too. Damn, no, I actually have some really cute ass friends I could really introduce you to. Well, what, what, time, what time is it? Are you, are you trying to like, are you trying to hang out longer? What are you trying to do? Now, what I'm doing is, is I'm scrambling her RAS. I'm switching between topics really quick and what I focus on is things of value, things of threat. Things of value or threat to this girl. So what this will do is it will scramble our RIS. Now the first time that if I were to change subjects one time and leave it at that, the girl will be like, oh wait, why are you trying to change subjects and bring it right back to that? But if I keep changing subjects really quickly, three or four times on things that she really likes, it'll scramble her RAS and she won't be able to keep up and eventually she'll completely forget about it and then just avoid threads that are really similar to the ones that she was really angry about. I call this avoiding negative triggers. So the girl's really negatively triggered towards me taking her friend home, so I avoid anything like that. So once I scramble her RAS, I stay away from subjects like that. I don't ever talk about me taking her girl home or leaving with her girl at all. I completely talk about other subjects, and when it's time for me to go home with her, I just take her home. Now, the next concept I want to get into is frames. Frames are very cool. Uh, now, you guys probably heard of frame battles and whatnot. Well, firstly, I want to take this to uh, the basics. So, the basics. Emotions are contagious. Now, us as a species are very, very herd-like. We're, we're more herd-like than any other creature on this planet. We're, we're contagious in every which way. So, my emotions are contagious. Me being excited is contagious. You guys feel my excitement through the camera. Me talking to you guys in an excited fucking fun mood is what you guys are feeling right now. You're feeling excited and having fun because I'm excited and having fun on the other side of this camera. Now, if you guys want a girl to feel a certain way, you have to feel that way first. You have to give the girl permission. So if you guys want a girl to feel excited, you want a girl to feel fun, you want a girl to feel adventurous, you want a girl to feel maybe horny, you gotta feel those emotions first. And the longer you're around the girl, the more susceptible she is to those emotions. Now, on the next level, frames are contagious. Now, what do I mean by this? All right, let's say you were on an island with me. All right, we're on an island for a year. And I believed 100% the sky was red. No matter what the fuck you told me, that sky up there above us is red. After a year of me repeating this and believing this, eventually, you're gonna believe the same thing. If my frame is stronger than yours that the sky is red, the sky will be red. You'll go back home and you'll be a babbling idiot. The sky is red. Now, this is very big too. So for a lot of you guys that are maybe like, 40, 50 plus years, a lot of you guys are like, I, I get a lot of messages from a lot of you guys. You guys are like, well, how do I approach a girl that's younger than me? You believe it's more normal. You believe it's normal. You believe it's okay. And you believe it more than she believes it's not okay. You see George Clooney? George Clooney does not give a fuck about his age. He believes it's okay. And because he believes it's okay, he said it's, he's the exception to the rule. Become the exception to the rule. Believe 100% that it's okay for you to talk to girls. Believe that no matter what your fucking age, you're still a human being and you can talk to whoever the fuck you want. All right, this is your life. This is why, like, you know, looks don't matter. This is why things like that don't matter. This is why if you come to a girl in a fun mood or if you approach a girl randomly, if you believe it's not okay for you to approach a girl, it's gonna come across in your sub-communication. The girl's gonna sense that that's your frame. And then from there, the girl's gonna resist you. She's gonna show it back to you. She's gonna mirror back your belief. And you guys are both mirroring it back and forth to each other and then it's awkward. So what you wanna do is have a stronger belief that it's okay and you're gonna have a lot of fun, then she is gonna be the opposite. 
This is how a game is played. This is how you flip people. You believe stronger than they do that this is gonna go well, that you're gonna have an awesome time with this girl. All right, with that being said, peace out. Let's go! We gotta go now! Yeah.